Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Carlo DeMarco to the Small Business Committee today. Dr. DeMarco is from my hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania. He is the 112th president of the American Osteopathic Association. He is also a professor and regional dean of clinical medicine and director of ophthalmology residency program at the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine in Erie, um, which we call LECOM. Aside from his duties at LECOM, Dr. DeMarco is part of, a medical, of medical Associates of Erie, a network of multi-specialty physicians who practice throughout Erie County and teach in affiliation with LECOM. Uh, welcome, Dr. DeMarco. Thank you, uh, Chairman Velasquez, and uh, thank you, Chairman Velasquez and Ranking Member Graves and Representative Del Kemper and members of the committee. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. As president of the American Osteopathic Association, which, re which represents 67,000 osteopathic physicians across the country, and as professor and regional dean of the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, I am acutely aware of the challenges of addressing the, our nation's physician workforce for shortage, particularly in the field of primary care. At LECOM, our mission is to educate physicians in the osteopathic tradition of competent and compassionate whole person care. The percentage of our graduates who pursue careers in primary care is 67 percent, placing LECOM at eighth in the nation for training primary care physicians. But despite this commitment of primary to primary care, the challenges facing our profession and our students are increasingly prohibitive. These central, three central factors contribute to our current and projected primary care workforce shortage, and these factors also apply to general surgery. The Medicare physician payment system, graduate medical education, reimbursement policies, and time-consuming administrative burdens that shift attention away from patient care. With respect to physician reimbursements, studies show that income disparities have a significant negative impact on the choice of primary care careers over specialties among the nation's young physicians. This is not surprising given that the average income of a primary care physician is approximately one-third of a specialist, while practice costs are often even higher. Unless Congress takes immediate action to establish a more equitable physician payment system and predicted workforce shortage can only worsen. We urge Congress to enact financial incentives for primary care physicians to provide a bonus of at least 10 percent for primary care services with a mandate annual increases to achieve market competitiveness. As you know, the instability of the current physician payment system stemming from the flawed sustainable growth rate formula results in the threat of annual costs and cuts. We appreciate Congress's yearly interventions to avert these drastic cuts, but a Band-Aid approach does nothing to alleviate the underlying systemic problems driving physicians out of medical practice. The unpredictability forces small, pri small primary care practices with limited revenues and narrow margins to make difficult decisions about whether to lay off staff, reduce their Medicare patient population, defer investments, or retire early. Medicine is calling, but the business of medicine is general, in generally, is a small business. No business can survive with its expenses exceeds its revenues. Administrative burdens create additional strains on primary care physicians, resulting in a significant decline in professional satisfaction and hampering recruitment efforts. In fact, 60 percent of primary care physicians would not recommend a career in medicine, while physicians in all other specialties f fare unnecessary, face unnecessary and costly administrative hassles. The burden on primary care physicians in small practices is particularly excessive, detracting from the time uh, available for patient care. Primary care physicians' role in coordinating care and making needed referrals to specialists typically involves frequent interaction with Medicare and other third-party payers to obtain required approvals, services and payments, and resulting in paperwork and overhead expenses at almost twice as that of other physicians. A typical primary care physician must coordinate care for Medicare patients with 229 other physicians working in 117 different offices, yet receives no compensation for these care coordination services. The AOA supports the development of a new delivery and payment model, such as the patient-centered medical home, that will allow primary care physicians to provide com comprehensive continuous patient care. Reforms to the graduate medical education training system are also an essential component of workforce force development. First, the current graduate medical education system is not capable of meeting increases in, enroll in enrollment in the nation's colleges of osteopathic medicine and colleges of medicine. We support a modification of current limits on the number of funded residency training positions 
through a one-time increase in the number of funded positions by 15 percent. Additionally, we support modifications that allow for collaboration through consortiums such as the Osteopathic Postgraduate Training Institutes or OPTIs. These consortiums allow several teaching locations to share resources, thus enhancing the educational opportunities for the resident physician. Finally, research has shown that physicians who are trained in a community health centers, for example, are twice as likely to, likely to work in underserved settings and four times more likely to work in health centers after completing their residencies. However, Medicare does not reimburse for most time spent in outpatient settings. We urge Congress to enact legislation that will create new training opportunities in non-hospital settings and clarify existing regulations governing such training. Providing residents with the opportunities in real-world settings offers greater exposure to primary care specialties and increases the likelihood that residents will choose to practice in these settings and in small physician practices that make up the backbone of our primary care system. And on behalf of the AOA, I would like to thank you for drawing attention to this important issue, and we look forward to continuing to work with you in addressing the physician workforce.